this is our load for a boondocking trip on BLM land with rain possible in the forecast. So it's actually still pretty spacious. I got all this stuff spread out. So this is the table. That is the canopy and those are the poles for the canopy. And all the rest of the stuff in there. I got the potty in there and the rug. I am not having a fire this time, so no firewood, no axe, no torch, none of that. No shovel. So that lightens things up a bit. And camera gear, uh, Gunther's backpack carrier in here since we're going on a hike and I might need to carry him. The mini kitchen, of course Gunther's seat, Gunther's water. Uh, rain jacket, just in case. Uh, Gunther's cot. Slippers, important. The fridge, I've got it run into the 12 volt plug in the center console. Uh, clothes, hoodie, you know, the usual stuff. Yeah, and underneath the uh, Cupid heater. And that is all of the little stuff, you know, speakers, lights, towels, junk. As always, we have a couple stops to make along the way. Let's get it. Right, All right, thank you. Thank you. Like that. Anyway, so I'm gonna do my best to stash my camera gear. All right, so I moved the kitchen and the backpack and anything that looked like it could be anything back here, um, just because the windows back here are actually tended pretty dark. So I don't think people are gonna see much of anything. So now I just gotta leash up Gunther. We're gonna go for a hike. So this is Badger Springs Trailhead and apparently you can camp here. So it wasn't too hard to get to and way off in the distance. You can kind of see the flow of traffic. That's the, uh, the I-17. We're gonna go a little, take a little hikey. Apparently there's a stream down here and some petroglyphs. birds are in these little nests but there's a little teeny hole in there they've got a great protection look at this nobody's gonna climb in that a little wet what do you know there are the petroglyphs very cool they go all the way up to the top there in that dark rock where the cactus is hanging off. There's some more up there. This is the creek. Uh, I think there might be a little bit of marshy water up there, but uh, I don't feel like going any farther. I think we're gonna have a water break and I'm gonna load Gunther in the backpack and we're gonna go to camp. We went up an exit. <laughs> All right, so 
I think that is the border and then it's state trust land maybe. But I think this is the one I'm interested in. Yeah, whole huge pile of trash. Gross. I'm looking for a windbreak. That is the thing. It's supposed to be windy. And I'm thinking if I can get down in here, it's either going to make it better or worse. <laughs> I don't want to, that wash is pretty deep. I don't think I can go in there, but if I can get tucked behind these trees, maybe. I'm not sure that was the one. I think that was my second choice one. I think the one I'm interested in was earlier and I missed the turn. So I'm going to go back. Back here. Yeah, see, there's some junipers up ahead. This is first choice. Oh boy, that is rutted. Oh man. All right, I need to look at this. The trail gets uh, pretty spicy down there, but um, as long as I pick the right, as long as I pick the right line, I don't have a spotter. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> We're off-roading. I'm just gonna easy peasy step her down there. Nope, no problem. Whoa. We are on an adventure. All right, this is where I ended up. No protection whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, so this is where we're at. We are literally right on this road. I don't think it gets a lot of traffic. And what I did is the wind is coming from that way. So I parked the Forerunner across from it because this is gonna be my main entrance and exit. And, um, and the Forerunner is gonna be our protection and that is it. So anyway, that's a nice spot though. It's real pretty. You still hear a little bit of highway noise. As you can see, the vehicle's going way over there. That's the I-17. I'm gonna walk down here and see what's up. You can really feel the wind down here. It feels very exposed. The wash down there. And a couch. Fantastic. I brought the uh, gear top canopy to put up because it's supposed to um, rain tonight and early tomorrow morning. But I think it's just too windy. I think it's gonna get, no matter how much I weigh it down, I think it's gonna get ripped up in those 34 mile per hour gusts. So my plan is take everything in at night and if I want uh, a little bit of shelter, I'll just use the tailgate. It's wild, it's getting wild out here. It's a little sunny though, look at that, hey? Super simple lunch, as with the theme. It's uh, basically peanut butter and jelly, 
except it's almond butter and apricot jam. I don't know why they go so well together, maybe because they're botanically related, but one of my favorite combos. And a caffeine boost. He already had his lunch, but he wants more. Good. Oh yeah, that's much better, <laughs> much warmer. The, uh, with the hatch open, it seems like the wind was just catching this corner right here and ricocheting in. So when I was sitting on that side, I was getting a bit of it. The bedside views are pretty nice. I've been waiting to the last minute to put the window covers on because uh, it's just so nice to look out there. There's nobody around, so. Privacy isn't really a concern. It's got to be 34 mile per hour gusts. But I did stage the Forerunner correctly because it is 95% hitting this side. When I stand out there, I don't feel it. It's now about 3 o'clock, which means happy hour, I think. Am I going to make a fancy cocktail like I usually do? No. I always wanted to do that gag. Ah, that's better. <laughs> Lately I've been all about Sauv Blancs, so this is the selection this time, this Magistrate Sauvignon Blanc. And uh, first taste, big fan. It's got all the floral citrus stuff that I like. So uh, this was a winner and it was pretty inexpensive. I mean, screw cap. So I have 30 minutes to <laughs> make dinner, an early dinner, um, before it starts coming down. Melty. Pretty good. Well, uh, sun's getting ready to go down, so I um, started getting settled in for the night put up most of the window covers and uh, turn the lights on. Also, I've got um, anything I left outside tarped. And uh, yeah, hopefully that'll do. All right, it is a little after six and we are locked in for the night. I have all the window covers on and the doors are locked. And I just wanted to do a couple updates. So, first of all, I am trying not to use a heater in here this trip, so I have another blanket. This is a fleece throw. It's folded in half because it's very wide. So I have the usual little Ikea blanket, and then I have the fleece throw, and then I have um, our usual sleeping bag, and then underneath that, 
the Timu uh, 12 volt electric blanket, which I will be running off of. Let's see, oh, it's pretty dark up there, but right up here is the uh, All Powers power bank. And it is running the fridge. And so what I'm gonna do is just unplug the fridge at night. Don't really need it, it's gonna be cold. I don't have anything super perishable in here. It's already at 35 degrees. So um, I'm just gonna swap these out. And then at night I can just hit the DC power button off and on if I need the heat from the blanket. But this thing gets really hot. So um, if I get desperate, I have this uh, little fleece sleeping bag, which is covering my pad right now. But if I got really desperate, I could zip it open and get under that. So I have many layers here. And then uh, this is that um, stadium chair. And I just keep it here because I could use the extra support. Honestly, this, this pad is starting to compress. So it's not as supportive as it used to be. So this is just um, for my hips and my shoulders. So it only covers my torso type area, but that's really all I need. And the other thing, the EcoFlow, you may recall from the last video, I was surprised that it was not at 100%, even though I had charged it all day. And that was shame on me for not double checking. Turns out it gets an overload error when I am trying to charge it with AC power. So wall, household, regular power. I get a little overload error right here. Or actually, it's right here. And then it says 50 HC here. And I have tried a uh, hard reset. I have tried um, changing to 60 um, hertz or whatever. No difference. Same thing. So I reached out to EcoFlow and basically they were like, well, the river, the first generation river is now out of warranty. So I'm a, I, at, when I contacted them, it was about one month outside of warranty. So they're like, if you want to get it fixed, here are some service people that you can pay to fix it. Not me. <laughs> so the other input, so if I want to charge it by the um, 12 volt input or solar, that works okay. So I recharged it mostly with solar, but then I did a through charge with the all powers and that worked. So I can recharge it that way. I'm carrying the DC input cable with me. So I can recharge it with the Forerunner as I'm driving. Inconvenient, yes, <laughs> but it's not, it's not entirely useless. So disappointing. Part of the reason I chose EcoFlow is because they had such a reputation as a great company that supports their products and, you know, stuff lasts a long time, but only has two-year warranty. So if you're thinking about getting uh, EcoFlow, definitely get the ones with the five-year warranty, um, just in case. It's been a while since I've come out here. Last time I remember there being like seals or sea lions or something. So it's supposed to rain at four o'clock and it's supposed to rain at five o'clock. Didn't rain. And then it was supposed to rain at nine o'clock. It is seven o'clock and it's raining. <laughs> kind of nice. Wow, it's coming down. I think I am going to queue up a movie and we're gonna settle in. What would go great with a movie? Popcorn. Now I've made popcorn in the jewel at home, but I haven't done it in the field yet. So seems like a good opportunity. But before I get to that, so they started with this thing, which they gave me, which is great. I used the heck out of the kettle and then the pylon, which is like the five in one, I think it is, but 99% of the time I use it for the hand warmer. I uh, 
heat it up and I put it in the bottom of my sleeping bag and it keeps my feet warm and it warms Gunther because he likes to sleep at the end of the bed. Okay, right, bud. Now, they have sent me the smart mug. We'll see how this goes. I literally got it yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to try it out. All I've done so far is charge it up. I installed the app on my phone. So I think what I'm gonna do is for tomorrow, I am going to set it up with some instant coffee and a little hot cocoa. So it's gonna be like a mocha. So it's gonna be ready to go when I wake up. That's the plan. Cause we're all about simplicity and ease this trip. I'm just gonna let that marinate overnight. All right, so remember the dealio with this thing is that this is the oil, this is the popcorn, that's the, the measuring device. But I am gonna wanna use this to boil water for my second cup of coffee, because I'm gonna want a pour over. And to keep it clean, nobody wants a popcorn well, maybe popcorn flavored coffee would be okay. Anyway, I got these foil uh, bucket liners. They're for um, if you barbecue or smoke meat, you have a bucket that captures the drippings and these are for that. So this is from Traeger and it turns out it's a pretty darn good fit. I'm gonna turn this off for now. There we go little less atmospheric. Let's see, I put my oil up here. Let's see, it should fit. So that is oil. And then I put my popcorn up here. I think that's sufficient for one person. There's a pop setting. Turn her up. In this little thing, I have um, popcorn seasoning. Yeah, this is the movie theater, actual movie theater popcorn seasoning. Flavor, flavor call, flavor call. Anyway, so I have this. What? I imagine the best place to start. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I put the jewel in the EcoFlow and it ran through the popcorn cycle and then turned off, but no popping. So I moved it to the all powers, same thing, ran through the popcorn cycle, turned off. And I try to turn it back on again. I wonder if it's because I have this foil liner in here. Maybe it's keeping the kernels too far away from the heat. Talking and not talking. Uh, Hear that pupper? We could not talk or talk forever. Not at the same Starbucks, but we saw each other at different Starbucks across the street from each other. All right, so maybe don't use that for popcorn, but if you're making ramen or something like that, that's probably fine. It insulates just a little too much. Still gonna use it to serve in. This guy had all day to pee, all day. I took him out one more time before he closed up for the night. Not interested. 
When it's raining, he wants to go outside. It is coming down. I mean, it's very relaxing, but it's giving me a little bit of anxiety because I know that I have to get out of here tomorrow. I'm concerned it's gonna be muddy or slick, or muddy and slick. So it's both relaxing and anxiety inducing. It is like one in the morning and I thought we were gonna get some showers tonight. No, it is absolutely dumping down rain. It is pouring out there. Somewhat concerning. Oh boy. Whoa. It's froggy out there. Super spooky. Oh. I think maybe it reached its temperature. What time is it? 7.05. So that took like 20, 30 minutes. Let's see. Could be warmer. I think it's at like, like maybe 110. Initial impression. Is it fast? No. Is it convenient? Yes. So I could see if you're a tea drinker or if you just drank instant, just set it, forget it, come back and you've got a hot drink. I like that it's battery powered, so it's not taking energy from power banks. I'll have this and then I'll, <laughs> I'll use the kettle and make coffee. filming this very beautiful morning scene and all I can see is that this rock looks like a butt that's a butt I touched the butt <laughs> childish a little assessment of the impact of the rain I think my tarp held up just fine I think everything under there well let's see how the camping bag did <laughs> I think it's probably okay because I have it. Oh yeah, it's still dry. So that did okay. Gunther's cot, however, absolutely saturated. That was user error. I should have put it more center, I think, because I think it just rolled right off the body, down the mud flap, and right on top. So, Or it splashed up from the bottom, or both. So Gunther's cot is saturated but I think what's on top nope I can see drops there so I think it just splashed up everywhere it came down pretty hard back in bed so my sis was nice enough to send me this uh, Stanley pour over kit which is very sweet um, it's a little too big for the ammo can kitchen so I just brought the big box and uh, I'll probably mostly use it at home still it's this uh, this pour over filter is very large um, but it's nicer than what I have at home so. matches I get questions about this it holds metal shot glasses like four shot glasses and it came with um, my little Stanley flask as a set 
I never use the shot glasses, but this is the perfect size for coffee for a couple days. Also, you may have noticed this pouch of sweetened condensed milk. I have been using the same pouch since the Mount Lemon trip, which I think was September. Now this is not um, FDA, USDA approved or anything like that. And I mostly keep it refrigerated, but not always. And because my thinking is this, is that the sugar content is so high and that the oxygen stays out. It stays good for a good long time. I am finally almost out of it and I have used the heck out of it. So big fan of this, especially if you like Vietnamese style coffee or you just don't want to be bothered with packing cream and sugar. It's just condensed milk and a boatload of sugar. So works for me. Pretty good. Ha ha ha. this area cleared and I've got the um, rug down so my plan is if this rain doesn't let up in the next 30 minutes or so I'm just gonna put my rain jacket on run around back and throw all that wet stuff right here and uh, we should be good to go I got changed when we're in here I put away just about everything and uh, yeah All right, and just gotta move that dog. Hey bud, you ready to go? <laughs> you can get in your seat. Okay, I'll get you. Wanna go for a ride? Come on. There we go. All right, got all that stuff in. Got Gunther loaded up. All right, hit the road. I turn the heat on in here. Yeah, that could have gotten real squirrely over there. We did it though. 